Hello and welcome. My name is Alyssa and this is Into the Heart Wild. And today, for once, I am bringing you guys my February wrap-up in a decent time manner. <laughs> I've decided to film this right at the end of February. Uh, I want to say it's like the 25th when I'm filming this, so I can hopefully have this up at the start of March instead of like halfway through it. But this is the wrap-up of all the books that I read in February which wasn't a whole lot because the first two weeks of February I got really sick um, and was laid up in bed for a couple days and then couldn't really talk and had the worst cough imaginable. <laughs> so yeah, but I did get some reading done. Overall, I read six, six books in total, um, like all the way through. <laughs> some of these I will have separate review videos up for they might come before this video they might come after who knows but there will be some some of them will have review videos so anyways with that said uh, we will start with the first one that I did not finish <laughs> and that would be a rise of empire so I actually finished the first book so, so if you know these are two books in one I finished the first one um, at the beginning of February and then I actually, <laughs> I actually stopped um, reading this because I had noticed a bigger reviewer was in the middle of reading these and my, this is a personal thing. This is a personal thing. This is nothing against the other reviewer. This is a personal thing that I have to learn how to deal with. But my brain had shut down and was like, we don't want to compete with this bigger reviewer reading this series. And so it made me push it aside. And I was like, I will go back to that series when that reviewer is done. Um, and I know I shouldn't look at it that way. I know I shouldn't look at it as a competition. But that was how my brain dealt with it. Um, I obviously am going to finish the series because I do I love Hadrian so much. He is he is one of my favorite characters of all time. Um, but yeah, I just I ended up stopping because I just my my brain said we're not doing that right now. So, <laughs> but I did finish at least the first half and I did enjoy it. I do I do like it. I love the the ease of this series and how easy it is to follow along with the plot and what's going on. And Royce and Hadrian are just amazing characters. Um, the first half of the book, since I did read it, you know, I will at least speak on that a little bit. Um, it was very interesting seeing Hadrian be such a such a quiet and downer throughout of it throughout the the first book, and Royce um, kind of being like, "What are you doing, buddy?" <laughs> um, but also, we got to see um, some of the more softer sides of Royce and why he doesn't want to lose Hadrian in their partnership. Um, so that was nice and overall um, I felt it was a bit slower um, because it did focus more on like the characters themselves and not so much this bigger plot there is a bigger plot there was it did wrap up and everything um, but yeah I will I'm hoping in March because um, if I remember correctly the reviewer that was also reading this at the same time they have finished the the the, the trilogy or however many the, the printed trilogy <laughs> um they have finished finished it so um hopefully in march i will be able to go back to this without my brain being like <laughs> so after that you guys i can i just take a minute real quick to say that i have the iphone 14 okay and all you have to do is tap the screen to activate it <laughs> I <laughs> I am so used to that now that like every electronic I pick up I'm like and it doesn't do anything and I'm like oh yeah I have to press the button to activate the screen <laughs> so I'm constantly like picking up my kindle going eh, eh, and then be like oh yeah I have to hit a button uh, <laughs> I just I needed to share that because I don't know if other people do that but I do like I've had this phone for like less than less than four months and I'm like everything is touch <laughs> So it's so bad. But anyways, um, so the first book that I um, finished fully, no, stop asking me questions, would be, and I'm bringing it up on here because um, I don't want to have to like find the picture and like 
re <laughs> resize it. I'm being lazy, but <laughs> it's this Eclipse <laughs> by Herman <sighs> Stewernagel. I hope I said that right, but there's the cover. It's a sci-fi. Um, this was, uh, it's the first in a series. So the first book is definitely a lot of setup. Um, it follows two point of views that do eventually intermingle with each other. Um, it did take a good portion. It did take pretty much the entire book to kind of intermingle them, um, which is fine. But it was very interesting seeing how the author was going to get to that point of intermingling them. Um, one follows uh, Mika, who is a ex space pirate. I found her portions of the story um, more interesting in terms of her and who she is and her past. Like, I want to know so much more about her past. Um, I want to know about what this great big thing she did that kind of that kind of like led to her decision of becoming an ex pirate. Um, her chapter did her chapters did start out like more interesting but then kind of like tapered off and kind of lost that interesting edge to them um because it all just became very internal monologue with her um and it just kind of like she wasn't really interacting with too many people around her so she, like she does have an interaction with one other character but a, a lot of it was her internally talking to herself Whereas the other half of the story follows Django, who his chapter started out a little bit on the slower side, but then got really interesting because he's living on this space station that is hiding so many secrets from the people who live on this space station. And it's particular and the space station is built into like different levels. You know, like your highest level or for like you're nice, you're rich and everything. Your bottom one is for the bottom feeders, you know, the poor. Um and he thinks he likes this idea. He thinks he's like set living this way. Um, but then slowly things start to unravel and things start to fall apart and he gets caught in it and his family gets caught in it. Um, overall, like the portion of his story is very interesting because you're like, why are they hiding this? Like, what is going on? Like, why are they doing this? Um, and then he ends up, you know, going on the run because he's got to get away from them because he got so wrapped up in it. Uh, the thing is, his character, though, his character, though, is, <laughs> he is frustrating, you guys, because he was always like, my world is falling apart around me, but gee, I sure wish I could tell my best friend I like her. And I'm like, boy, if you don't get your priorities straight, if you do not get your priorities straight right now. And I do have to say it was the one aspect of the book that just really grated on my nerves the entire way through because he was always just like, I'm not good enough for her. I wish I could tell her how much I like her. She'll never like me. I ain't good enough for her. And I was just like, Django, shut up. Your entire family is like being killed off. What are you doing? What? What? You're running for your life. People are trying to kill you. There are more important things to worry about. <laughs> like, it just... <laughs> Overall, though, like, it's a great setup to the story. Um, I really do hope that the next one will kind of downplay Django and his his feelings for his friend. Um, but I also want to see where it goes next because the way that the story intertwined... The way that the two storylines intertwined with each other neither character is like kind of like aware uh <laughs> you know um especially like with what's going on um and how it all led up to it so it's very interesting I am interested to see where the story is going to go next and how it's going to pick up um I do hope that we get like that background story on Mika some more because like I said like her her ex-pirate life just it's interesting and like I want to know and I also I want to see her in action as someone who is who who was someone who did a lot of fighting and whatnot like I really hope that we will eventually get to see her like in action so yeah great start to a new series definitely worth checking out if you like sci-fi and adventure and everything um it definitely focuses more on humans in space and the whole like oh earth has been ruined and now we're living in space kind of thing um I do like the author kind of flips some things about the rich and the poor so that was very, very, um, d d very different. So yeah, definitely worth checking out if you, if you like sci-fi and humans in space being lied to. <laughs>
After that, I read Black Horses for the King by Anne McCaffrey. Uh, this is a king, this is an Arthurian inspired tale. It takes place in the world of King Arthur. There will be a review coming for this, but basically this book is all about the horses that Arthur gets so that they can fight the Saxons on land and basically scare them because he wants the biggest, scariest looking war horses they can possibly find. I personally thought it was cute. I think it's only going to appeal to a very niche type of person. And that is not just in the realm of like, oh, you like Arthurian, because I think even like a big Arthurian fan might actually find this to be very bland and boring. And when you look at a lot of the reviews, it's kind of around that realm. For me, <laughs> I was that particular niche and that niche is horse. Um, I'm a horse girl. Uh, so, <laughs> cause it focuses very heavily on the horses in this book. Like I said, there is a video where I will be talking in depth about it. So do look forward to that if you're interested. But yeah, it's very quick, very quick little book. I read it in under 24 hours. So yeah. After that, I read Merlin's Brook, another Arthurian based story. This is by Jane Len. This is actually a collection of short stories. And one of them is actually an excerpt from one of her longer stories, which I have read two of them in here. I have read as standalones by themselves because they are produced outside of these books. Um, but overall, they're just quick little tales that revolve around Merlin from his birth to his death. Um, there's a story that's um, based around Guinevere. There's a story based around Excalibur. So you get you get like a nice little mix and everything, but you get how Merlin is attached to each of those stories. Um, this one will also be having a slightly more in-depth review with the black horses for the king if you're interested in that it will be coming at some point so then i finally <laughs> i finally finished the broken empire trilogy with emperor of thorns by mark lawrence you guys i put this off for four years because i was worried my favorite character would die and i would like to let all of you know he does not die. <laughs> I don't ever listen to your thoughts that say, don't read that book. Your favorite character might die. And if you never read it and he does die, then it's like he never died. Um, because what ends up happening is that favorite character doesn't die. And then you're like, wow, I was so stupid for waiting that long to finish it off. <laughs> And like, thankfully, at the start of each book, Mark Lawrence does like a checklist of like all the events that happened in the previous books and everything. But also I did reviews for the first two books. And to be honest, I didn't really forget a lot of the stuff that had happened in the other two books. Um, overall, I do have to say I thought it was kind of anticlimactic, um, which is kind of a downer for me, uh, since I was like looking forward to it. Um, there I don't know it's just it it just it felt like it was just more traveling than it was story um because it was all about getting to like the congression so that they can crown the uh the emperor um and there was a lot of you, you know if you've read the series you know it goes back and forth between like 5 years earlier and the present day and even in the the 5 years earlier stuff it was just so much traveling just Whew. And I'm not a person who hates traveling. I like traveling in books, but whew, this one, I was just kind of like, can we, can someone, can someone stab someone? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I just, I was just like, can somebody stab somebody already? <laughs> um, so yeah, and then the ending, I'm kind of like, the actual like full, like the actual ending ending piece, I'm kind of like, okay, that's a, that's a way, that's an idea, I guess. Um, I, it wasn't what I was expecting. I can definitely tell you that it was not what I was expecting. So I do give it credit for that, but it was definitely like, okay, which I think is why it feels so very anticlimactic. Um, and I also feel like the final fight between Jorg and the dead King was just anticlimactic in itself as well. Um, I don't know, there was just like a lot of build up and I just, I kind of feel like book two was a bit more entertaining than this one, personally. Um, and also, I didn't like that Miana's character was, you know, boiled down to his pregnant wife. Like, I thought she was so feisty in the second book. Um, and then this one, she's just 
the pregnant queen. <laughs> well, that's all she was. Um, who may have had, like, a spicy attitude every now and then. And um, and I know, like, Jorg is not supposed to be, like, a likable character. But for the most part, I like Jorg's character. There was just some decisions he made in this one where I was like, you're a douchebag. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah. Definitely, definitely, um, definitely kind of mad at myself for waiting so long. Um, so, I do, I do actually think out of the entire trilogy, I think the first book is my favorite, honestly. Um, but, yeah, I definitely think... Uh, entertainment wise this is pro this one was the least entertaining um, but my favorite character is alive and well and I love him for that I don't like what Dorg did to him at the end of the book though because that was just rude that was just rude but <laughs> yeah don't don't put a book off for four years like I did don't do that don't do that to yourself <laughs> After that, I continued on with my Mark Lawrence reads because I own all of his books. Um, with Prince of Fools, there is a full view. Really, the really big deal. There is a full video review coming for this, so I won't go too much into detail about it. But overall, Snorri, he stole the show. This man just Prince Jalen who. I don't care. Fall off a cliff, please. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it has Norse inspiration all throughout it. It ties back into the Broken Empire because I don't know if all of you know this, but the series are all connected in one big world. So we do get to see some glimpses of some of the characters of all the brothers and such from uh, Prince of Thorns. Um, it also helps you figure out in the timeline where this falls during Jorg's stuff and how old Jorg is and compared to how old Jalen is. Um, Jalen is also just like an egotistical douchebag who I want to fall off a cliff, but you know, that's, that's whatever, I guess. <laughs> um, the, there's, there's a whole storyline between light and dark. A silent sister is there. Like, she's kind of cool. Like, I want to know what's, what's up with her. Um, and... Yeah, overall, though, like I said, Snorri stole the show. The beginning was a little bit slow to get into um, because of Jalen's character. Like, he's just... I understand that Mark Lawrence likes to write characters that are not supposed to be likable, but, like, I liked Jorg. I did not like this guy at all. And there will be more in-depth than that if you watch the full um, review video that I will be posting for this. But yes, um, I want, I'm in between like a 3.5 and a 4 star for it. I am continuing on with the series because I want to know, um, I want to follow Snorri's journey. I don't, I don't care about Jalen. Like I said, he could fall off a cliff and I wouldn't notice. Um, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and then because it is the end of the month and I am filming this at the end of the month, I have started The Liar's Key, book two in the Red Queen's War. Um, again, it started out just very, it takes a minute to get into because Mark is like, we're gonna, we're gonna focus on Jalen. And I'm like, I don't care. Make him fall off a cliff, you know? Um, <laughs> so yeah, I have started it. I'm what, like 25% into it right now. Um, if I finished it by the end of February, woo, if I don't, that's okay. Um, but yeah, I plan on reading the whole trilogy, like in in order, back to back. I don't want to take any breaks. I want to see if I can like commit myself to doing that. But right now I am enjoying it. Um, there's more with Snorri. Um, he just, he, he just steals the show. This is, this is Snorri's tale. This isn't Prince Jalen. No one cares about him. <laughs> so that is everything that I have read in February, whether I've started it or I haven't started it. Uh, so yeah, if you read any of these and you enjoy them, let me know in the comments and um, keep a lookout for the specified review videos that will be coming up. And until next time, uh, make sure you guys like, subscribe, all of those good things, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!